I think I'll just, I've got like five messages here I'm still praying about doing, and I'm saying, Lord, it's really time for a decision here. And not that, not that, not that I'm waiting on him, I realize he's probably waiting on me, but. But back in, um, I'm going to start, that's my first point, okay, I'm in my first point. We've moved into a new era. And I started using that term a year or two ago, and others did as well, because um, I just felt like, you know, it's, it's, it, it, uh, the word season is sometimes used uh, so frequently that uh, it, it just doesn't have the punch that was needed. We're in a new season. Yeah, I'm in a new season. This was, I could sense that this is so big. This is so, such a huge shift that um, I wanted a word that would, would capture that. And I felt like the Holy Spirit said era. We're moving into a new era. And he's been moving us toward this for a long time. And I think the first I heard of, well, maybe not the first time, but one of the significant times the Lord spoke to me about what we're coming into now was in 1986. I had an encounter with the Lord where he spoke to me personally in 1973. But in 1986, that's a long time ago. I was, uh, I was speaking to a prophet on, on the phone, and it was in the day of the, you know, we didn't really have many cordless phones. I don't know if we had any cordless. We didn't have cell phones. Um, so, you know, I was at my desk and had the old-fashioned phone, and then he started prophesying. I didn't expect that. We were just having a conversation. So we had a little cradle thing on the phone that goes on your shoulder, and you try to... You know, <laughs> But I wasn't very good at it, so I finally just, I got a phrase or two, that's about it. But there was only one phrase I really needed to remember. And he prophesied to me that I would be part of something called the fresh age of the Melchizedek order. The fresh age of the Melchizedek order. The guy's name was Chuck Flynn big guy, had, had the voice of a prophet, probably the deepest voice I've ever heard, and hey, my son, I mean, he just, <clears throat> you'd feel the anointing just because of the depth. <laughs> but I, you know, I asked him when he finished prophesying, I said, Chuck, you know, what, I mean, I was just a kid, he was older, I mean, I was just, you know, starting out, I said, Lord, or Chuck, what is this? Fresh age of the Melchizedek order. He said, well, I don't really know, brother. <laughs> he said, you'll just have to study it yourself. I don't know. So I studied and did what I felt like I could do at the time. I really didn't probably get as deep into it as I would have liked. I don't think the Lord would have trusted me with much more than what I got at the time. But I did study the life of Melchizedek, and uh, of course he was a type of Christ, and I'm not teaching on him tonight, I'm just going to mention a couple things. But as, as a type of Christ, Melchizedek was very unique in the sense that he was both a king and a priest, which, you, which didn't happen. You, were, you could be a king or a priest, but you couldn't do both. But he was both, because he was a, a very complete picture or type of the Lord himself, who is our king and our high priest. So when G- and then as I studied those two uh, functions, one of the things that really stood out to me was that the priest ministered heavenward, representing the needs of humans to God or just their own ministry upward, worship. 
incense, requests, petitions. Kings, on the other hand, start here and release authority to earth. So one goes this way, one goes this way. And that was interesting to me. And then the other thing that stood out was the, the verses that said, that say Jesus would establish a new order of priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. And it just suddenly stood out to me that this was not one person. It wasn't just Jesus fulfilling a an Old Testament type or picture as Mr. Melchizedek, he established a new order of priests, plural. And it would be a kingly, priestly order, representing his authority, his authority to earth, representing the needs of people heavenward, loving him, ruling for him. In 2000, the Lord spoke to me again. And he said, you will fully shift this nation. And then he specifically mentioned the government of our nation. You will fully shift America and the government of America when the church fully shifts from priestly intercession only to kingly intercession as well. And I didn't really fully understand it at the time, again, but I knew enough to know it went back to the Melchizedek word. That God was about to do a work in us of bringing revelation that we were more than just a bride. And we were more than just a family, more than just his body more than a fellowship, more than priests, worshiping him, petitioning, carrying needs that way, loving him, that we were to be moving at a higher level of authority than we were currently moving in. That we were to represent not only the high priest, but the king. And I knew we would go into a movement that's not, maybe not the best word. I knew we would go into a season where Holy Spirit would begin raising the level of revelation regarding our royal part of the priesthood we are, the royal priesthood, the kingly. And so now, 20 years later, we are moving into this. We're moving into Mark 16, or Matthew 16, in a, in a way that I'm not sure. We, we've probably never seen it. I'm sure, the early church experienced this. But when Jesus said, I'll build my church, and I'm not here necessarily to teach on ecclesia, this is all sort of to help us lay some groundwork to move. Um, into some other elements of this. But when Jesus said, I'll build my church in Matthew 16, build is the word oikos or oikotomeo. And it's the word family. The form of it used there means to create a lineage, to establish a household. Other references called the household of faith. So in that one word, build, he was saying one word. He said, I've come to get the family back. I've come to reestablish that part of the Genesis mandate, which was to be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply what? My family. Create more beings on the planet in my image. 
I need you to create people in my likeness. Profound. And he gave Adam and Eve the supernatural ability to reproduce human spirits. When they came together, they didn't recreate just flesh and blood like animals did. They were able to reproduce eternal beings. Just let that sink in for a minute. That which he did in them, creating them in his image, which the word image is so powerful that it is also the Hebrew word for phantom. What's that all about? A shadow. Well, you think you saw something, but you didn't really see it. It was just a phantom. So when you looked at Adam, you would look double take and say, I thought I saw God. It's just Adam. Likeness, de muth is the word, in his likeness that means comparable to. It is not heresy to say when he created Adam and Eve, he made them comp com comparable to him. Psalm 8 says just a little lower than God. He made them as much like him as he could without cloning himself. And in some ways, he did clone himself. He put his very spirit in them. He said to them, I'm only going to do this once. Then you're going to reproduce me. You're going to give me family. He wants a big family. Jesus said, I came to get the family back. 